you who are joining us Facebook Live and who will be joining us via streaming on YouTube on our website. This is a day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. We've come to worship our God in the beauty of holiness, to celebrate God for his loving kindness and his tender mercies. And I just want to let you know this morning that today is a mighty good day to praise the Lord. Started me on my way. Give me a brand new dawning. Give me a brand new day. It's a mighty good day. It's a mighty good day. It's a mighty good day. Praise the Lord. Woke me up this morning. Started me on my way. Give me a brand new day. It's a mighty good day. It's a mighty good day. It's a mighty good day. Woke me up this morning. Started me on my way. Give me a brand new dawning. Give me a brand new day. It's a mighty good day. It's a mighty good day. It's a mighty good you. God bless you. Deacon Patrick Price will lead us in prayer this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, O Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Father God, we come bowed as humbly as we know how, thanking you for another day, a day that we've never seen before and one that we'll never see again. Heavenly Father, we thank you for watching over us last night as we slumbered and slept in a mere image of death. But as you, O Heavenly Father, we acknowledge that woke us up this morning and started us on a brand new day. Lord, we are so grateful, we are so thankful, Heavenly Father. Father God, we come knowing and understanding that you are God and that you're God all by yourself. Heavenly Father, we come thanking you for being so good and being so kind to us. Lord, you've been better to us than we could ever be for ourselves. Heavenly Father, we come praying that you will watch over those who are sick and shut in, oh, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we come praying for those who are incarcerated. Let them be incarcerated in their bodies, oh Heavenly Father, but let their minds be free. Heavenly Father, we come thanking you for this country, oh Heavenly Father. Bless all of our leaders and all of our future leaders, oh Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we come praying that you would heal this land, oh Heavenly Father. We know that there are many doctors and physicians, oh Heavenly Father, but there is only one healer. And that's you, Lord. Heal this land, Lord. We need you today, oh, Heavenly Father. We just can't get along without you. Heavenly Father, we come praying for Pastor Punch, oh, Heavenly Father, that you would touch him from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet, that you would speak to him, oh, Heavenly Father, and speak through him, that he may speak to us and that we may hear and understand your word. Heavenly Father, we come praying for everyone that's under the sound of our weak voice. Heavenly Father, we come thanking you right now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen.
Thank you. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for yet another praise privilege. Now, God, as we prepare to open the book, we ask that you would open our ears, our hearts, and our minds that we might hear, receive, and understand your word. Set David down and raise the Christ up within, and you preach with power, with conviction, with fire and authority that you purpose your word to accomplish, we say thank you because we know your word will not return unto you void. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Aren't you glad that you're a vessel of the Lord? 
We're continuing in our series of messages from the book of Nehemiah. We're in Nehemiah chapter 4, and it is our purpose uh, this morning to pick up where we left off in chapter 4 and our message on last Sunday, Delayed But Not Denied. We're going to uh, finish that message uh, this morning, and I just want to uh, look at for a focal point for our scripture, uh, Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 6. Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 6. So built we the wall, and all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof, for the people had a mind to work. So we built the wall, and all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof, for the people had a mind to work. To work. God bless you. We said in our message, delayed but not denied this message, we have shared that every delay is not a denial. Just for review purposes, for those of you who I know have been taking copious notes, uh, we shared on last week that no leader is exempt from criticism. Uh, uh, and matter of fact, his humility is nowhere uh, seen more clearly than in the manner in which he accepts and reacts to that criticism. Uh, we gave you two observations on last Sunday and we'll conclude with the third observation and then three practical truths for our message. The first observation that we shared on last week is that there is always the presence of opposition. The presence of opposition. Because the, the heart of the habitual critic resists change. The heart of the habitual critic resists change. So you're always going to face some opposition. And then you need to know in the midst of facing that opposition is that critics run with critics. Our second observation from last week's message was that you've got to face your criticism uh, squarely. Uh, and, and, and what Nehemiah did when his critics, Sanballat and Tobiah and all the rest of the Ammonites came, uh, what he did was he faced his criticism squarely. And he did two things in facing those criticisms, which are good for us to do anytime we face criticism as believers and as people of faith. We've got to pray, and then we have to persist in what we're doing. Nehemiah prayed, and he persisted. Now, one of the things that, that we discuss, and I'm so wonderfully uh, grateful to Sister Simmons for singing that song, is that we, we mirrored this challenge and this facing of criticism uh, that Nehemiah faced, we, mi we mirrored it with the Apostle Paul's teaching to the church at Corinth in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, uh, verses 7 through verse 10, where he says, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the surpassing greatness of the power may be of God and not from ourselves. Then he says, We are afflicted in every way. We're but not crushed. We are perplexed, but not despairing. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always caring about in the body the dying of Jesus, that the life, he says, of Jesus may be manifest in our bodies. We're bruised, but not broken. Cast down, but not destroyed. The good news is that when believers face criticism for doing the work of God, listen, we've got help. We've got Holy Ghost power that sustains us in the midst of our various trials and the vicissitudes of life. Listen, what I want to do before we delve into uh, the final uh, observation and then the th three practical truths of our message is I want to remind you some things that as, as all of us face critics from time to time, and we face criticism, and look, if you're never doing anything, you don't have to worry about folk criticizing you. It's when you began to do some things that criticism begins to rear its ugly head. See, doing Christians are the worst enemies of the devil. As long as you're not doing anything, the devil don't bother you. He doesn't have to bother you because you already belong to him. But as soon as you make up in your mind and I'm going to get right, I'm going to get in line, I'm going to follow Jesus, I'm going to take no chance of getting lost, I'm going to follow Jesus, I'm going to commit my way to him, I'm going to trust him, I'm going to turn from my wicked ways and follow him. That's when it seems like all hell breaks loose. But let me remind you that criticism, if it is untrue, disregard it. 
If it's unfair, keep from irritation. If it's ignorant, then smile. If it's justified, it, it, it's not criticism. You got to learn from it. All of us are going to face some criticism, but you've got to learn how to decipher that criticism that you face. You've got to appreciate constructive criticism, and you need to ignore the destructive criticism. See, you are not what others think you are. You are what God knows you are. I, I don't care what people say. Matter of fact, I say all the time, be careful what you say about me because I'm an heir of salvation, can't you see? I'm not worried about what others think about who I am and what I am. I'm concerned about who God knows that I am. I am a child of the king. I belong to him and he belongs to me. Listen, let's go on into our message. Before, before Nehemiah ever said a word to the critics, and I'm in Nehemiah chapter 4, before he ever said a word to the critics, uh, he, he, he talked with God. Before he ever confronted the criticism that was levied upon him before he even uh, uh, dealt with or even, even was concerned about what was being said about him and the work that we, he was doing, Nehemiah first talked to God. He refused to retaliate even though others might have encouraged him to do so. You got to be careful about those folk who encourage you to do some things. They'll get you out on the limb. You'll be out on that limb all by yourself. They'll saw the limb off and you'll be left out there dying. Huh? You've got to be careful. But Nehemiah, before he ever said a word to the critics, he talked with, with God. The very first thing that ought to result from criticism, and you can write this down if you're taking copious notes, the first thing that ought to result from criticism is prayer. This principle is to be applied whether it's in business, whether it's in, ho in your home or at school. And listen, by all means, you ought to pray when you're at church. Never am I more used of God more significantly than when I'm praying for those who are criticizing me. See, there, there, is, there is no defense against criticism except if you live in obscurity. So if you're going to face criticism, then you need to know that you are never more used of God than when you're praying for those critics. Don't, 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 don't be distracted by them and by their criticism, but you go, you go to God in prayer and pray for those critics. Let me give you the third observation. And we said the first two observations were you had to, uh, uh, the presence of opposition. Number two, that you had to face criticism squarely. The third observation, and I hope you're putting that up there, Brother Kevin, is the need for common sense. And I, I, I need to say this, you know, common sense is not so common anymore. Uh, uh, it seems that people have, 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 the Bible says we'll come to a time where we'll be We'll be ever learning, but never come to the knowledge of the truth that our generations will become more wicked and more wiser and more wicked. But it seems like common sense is not that common anymore. But you have to have some common sense. Look at what Nehemiah does in chapter 4. Nehemiah approached the opposition in two ways. First, he took his setbacks to God in prayer. And that's in verse 6. And then second... He stayed to the task. Uh, uh, he persisted. Uh, uh, and, and I love what Nehemiah said in, in verse 6. He says, so we build the wall. And can't you just feel as verses 1 through 4 and 1 through 5, he's going through the criticism of Sanballat and then later Tobiah, and then the rest of them began to level their criticism at it. And then look, when he gets to verse 6, he says, in spite of. And in the midst of all of the criticism and the, the stinging barbs that they had been shooting at him, saying, ooh, if a fox get on that wall, it's going to fall down. Listen to what Nehemiah does. He takes his critics to the Lord, and then he persists in the work. And then verse 6 says, so we built the wall. And, 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 and I can just hear him saying, as, as they're leveling this criticism against him and the workers, I can hear him saying, y'all just keep on mixing the mortar. Just keep on mixing the mortar and hand me another brick. And that's what we've got to do in the midst of our criticism, in the midst of our critics. We've got to keep on working. Just, just hand me another brick. So we built the wall, is what verse 6, and the whole wall was joined together to half its height. We got half of the wall built. 
And the reason we did is because the people didn't mind the critics. He says the people had a mind to work. See, critics will demoralize, but good leaders will encourage. I'm talking about leadership. When the critics spoke, the workmen heard them and they were demoralized. But when the capable leader who was Nehemiah stepped up and he said, let's look at this thing in God's way. And he says to them, stay on the job. Don't give up. Stay in the fight. Keep your faith. Hang on in there. Everything is going to be all right. And the crew members were back in there and they picked up their trials. They picked up their wheelbarrows and they start putting together stone and mortar and the gates and the hinges. And he says, and the people had a mind to work and we build the wall to half its height. See, nothing excites Satan or the critics more than for his negativism uh, uh, to result in a slowdown of progress. And see, he wants, he wants, he wants to see the negativism that's thrown at you. He wants to see the attacks that are placed upon you to stop you. Because the devil, one of, one of, one of his, his keys is that one, he can stop the work, then he succeeded. And then if he can silence your witness, he succeeded. But you've got to keep on working in spite of what the enemies and what your critics say. you got to keep on pressing. You've got to keep on moving because the easiest thing to do when one is, is criticized is to give up. But I made up in my mind, I hope you've done the same, Pastor pa uh, Patrick Price, that you just keep on going. Just keep on going. Just keep on, just keep on toiling. Just keep. Nehemiah said, y'all stay to the task. Don't give up. Keep on building. And you could hear those workmen, if you could just picture yourself here in, 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 in the middle of this construction project, you can hear these workmen, they worked in shifts, they were working day and night, they were splashing on that mortar, they were putting those stones into place, and, and the productive activity should have assaulted the hearts of Sanballat and Tobiah and Geshem, but that's not the case. Even though they were leveling criticism and the people kept on working in spite of their criticism, you would think that that would hush up their critics. You would think that that would shut their mouth. You would think that they would be quiet when they saw that their criticism didn't make any headway. But listen, what verse 7 and verse 8 says is that instead of uh, 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 their, the, the critics' hearts being assaulted and that they went away, with their tail tucked between their legs, verses 7 and 8 says, no, that's not what happened. In fact, the size of the criticism group grew. <laughs> Verse 7 and 8 tells us that Sanballat and Tobiah were joined by the Ammonites and the Ashadites, and they even added some Arabs to the group. And they intensified their opposition, and when they heard that the repair of the wall of Jerusalem went on, and the breaches began to be closed, they were very angry. I'm still at verse 7 and 8. They conspired together to come and fight against Jerusalem and cause a disturbance in it. They wanted to stop the work. There are times when your criticism does not die down. Matter of fact, it will intensify. Not only did the critics expand their troops but they also added the, and intensified in their opposition. They added some intensity to their opposition. They planned, the verse says, and a conspiracy, and they arranged to cause a disturbance. It's not enough for them to talk about what you're doing, but then they'll get in and try to mess up what you're doing. And that's what happened. That's what the critics do. But listen, every delay is not a denial. It will merely bring you closer, especially when you're doing the work that God has assigned you to do. So what did Nehemiah do when confronted with this continued uh, harassment? Look at the text. And, and as was his custom, here's what Nehemiah did. He didn't cuss at him. He didn't cuss them out. He didn't waste his bricks and throw the bricks at them. But look at what he does. Look at what he does. And this, this, this ought to be a practice, uh, 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 Brother Terry, of every believer, Sister Harris, of every believer. This ought to be your practice, Sister Margaret, is that verse 9 says, But we prayed to our God, 
And because of them that were set up guard against them day and night. We, we, what we did, when they, when they intensified the criticism, when they added to the number of critics, here's what Nehemiah said. Nevertheless, we prayed, we prayed, we made our prayer to God, and we set watch against them day and night because of them. Oh, we prayed, huh? We prayed to God, but then we started watching, huh? Now, now, I know all of you have been in church a little while, can remember that, that song that says, you've got to watch, fight, <laughs> and pray. But now, I don't see in Nehemiah chapter 4, uh, uh, Brother Walker, and, and, and I don't see anywhere in Nehemiah chapter 4 that they fought. I see them praying, and I see them watching, but I don't see them fighting. And why is it that I don't see them fighting? Because God didn't call them to fight. God called them to build the wall. And sometimes you fight your best battles when you continue to do what God wants you to do. You don't have to raise a finger. You don't have to lift your fist. You don't have to open your mouth. You just do what God wants you to do and let the Lord <laughs> fight your battle. He says, so we just, we just kept on praying. And, and, and we watched them. You know, we, we, kept, our, we kept our eyes on them, but, but, but we, 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 we prayed. Nehemiah says, stay to the task. Stay to the task. The intensified opposition could have knocked him down, but it was a long way from knocking him out. And that's the thing. Sometimes you may be knocked down, but you're not knocked out because you can always get back up. Listen, 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 listen. Intensified opposition against the will of God calls for an intensified response. Oh, 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 when, when, when it seems like trouble get in your way and you have to cry sometime, you lay awake at night, but that's all right, Jesus will fix it after a while. Your intensified opposition against, or the intensified opposition against the will of God calls for an intensified response. So Nehemiah, not only, I'm still, I'm still in the text, not only heard the opposition, but he analyzed all the available data, and he prayed, and then he took decisive, practical action. He said, look at the verses. He said, let us set up a guard against them, and we set a watch against them, the King James Version says, day and night because of them. Now, that was common sense. That was a common sense response. You know the enemy is out there. You know the numbers are increasing. You know their criticism is intensifying. So what he says, listen, let me look at all of this available data. Let me see what's going on. I'm going to pray to God, but then I'm going to also take some divisive, decisive action. And so he said, set up a guard against them. Huh? He persisted by taking up arms. See, occasionally, occasionally persistence in the form of common sense must prevail. See, if you ever... Uh, uh, one of those kind of persons that, that are afraid of someone breaking into your house, uh, uh, listen, uh, you, ought to, you ought to by all means trust God, but don't forget to lock the door. If you're worried about somebody coming into your house on you, yeah, yeah, you're going to pray, but lock the door. Turn on the alarm if you're having an alarm. Put the burglar bars on there. You can certainly trust God. huh? Don't just pray about it. God, I, 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 I'm praying that don't nobody come in on me. Huh? Don't just pray about it. Be about it. Lock the doors. It's foolish to leave your doors unlocked and, and, and when you're praying that your home won't be burglarized. But what, what, what if you're out of a job? There's a lot of people out of a job. Yeah, pray. You ought to pray. Huh? But then hit the road. Get on out there and start looking for a job. Fill out some application. Make some contacts. Get in touch with as many opportunities as possible. The Lord doesn't, doesn't have any trouble hitting a moving target. So get out there and start doing something. In fact, it's easier to steer a moving vehicle than it is to steer one that's immovable. Huh? And that's immobile. Right? You ever sit in the car when it wasn't started, it wasn't doing nothing, try to turn the steering wheel? It ain't going to go nowhere. But as long as you're moving... If that's if you got power. Y'all got power steering? Brother Joel, you got power steering in that old truck you got? 
Yeah, he got it. He got it. He got it. Let me give you these three practical truths. <laughs> Let me give you these three practical truths, and then I'm through. Number one, it is impossible to lead anyone, and this is a part of a, a, a leadership series, this study of Nehemiah. It, it is impossible to lead anyone without facing opposition. And the leader must learn to take the heat. Huh? Heavy is the head that wears the crown. If you're going to be a leader, huh, you're going to be facing criticism. M maybe you're just a leader in your home. You're going to face, because somebody going to say, why you do it like that? I, if it was me, I would have done this. It's impossible to lead without facing criticism. Even if you're in a car with somebody and you're driving and they're in the passenger seat, they always got something to say, huh, about either how you're driving, slow down, no, you go to, oh, turn, why are you exit here? Well, you should have, you should go. No, no, you got to face criticism, huh? You're going you're gonna to have it. If you're leading, you're going you're gonna to face some opposition. And a leader must learn how to take the heat. You're going to face it. It, it. It's an occupational hazard. Some darts are going to be thrown at you. Number two, it's essential to face opposition, not with your fists, but with prayer. The first response to opposition must be prayer. Hmm. Prayer is the single most overlooked discipline in the Christian life among leaders, is prayer. How's your prayer life? How's your prayer life? You've got to face your opposition with prayer. The third and final thing is prayer is not all that's necessary huh? when opposition grows. Prayer is not all that's necessary if opposition grows. And that was true of David in the Bible because he prayed when Saul was after him, but he ran. <laughs> he ran. <laughs> he prayed, <laughs> but he ran. Yeah, yeah. When opposition intensified, he ran faster. When it got worse, he hid in more obscure places. Uh, in most cases, the critic isn't worth the worry. But if the leader has prayed and yet you find yourself facing intensified opposition, you got to put some common sense to work. No leader is exempt from, from criticism. Don't expect to be. Don't, don't, don't expect to be free from criticism. If you're a leader, you're going to be criticized. Don't, don't, don't expect to be free from that. But when it does come, my challenge to you is to be ready to battle against the discouragement because you got to be poised and ready to strike the heart of criticism. You can count on that. Criticism is coming. Oh, but I'm reminded of that wonderful hymn of the church. Be not dismayed. Whatever be tied. God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide. God will take care of you. He will. Through every day. Oh, all the way. God will take care of you. And if you get weary, lean weary one upon his breast. God will take care of you. If you're watching today, maybe, that, maybe that's your word for today. Don't be dismayed when trouble comes. Don't be dismayed when opposition comes. Not, not only physical opposition, but, but emotional opposition, spiritual opposition. Whatever comes up against you as a believer, be not dismayed. God will take care of you. As they sing, perhaps, perhaps you've been moved by the message. Perhaps you've been encouraged to hang in there. Continue to pray. Continue to trust God, and then continue to do the work. Don't stop because your critics talk about you. Don't stop because someone said something that hurt your feelings. Don't, don't stop because it seems like nobody has joined in what you're doing. Just keep on Doing what you're doing, if you know that what you're doing is what God has told you to do. 
be not dismayed. Whatever be tied, God will. God will. God will take care of you. Hey, what else? some of you this morning who are watching can give testimony to that. Brother Darrell, when, when your body is wrecked with pain and you don't know how you're going to bear it, how you're going to make the next step. When you're facing family situations and death in the family. Brother Daryl Davis, when it seems like your body just rebels against itself and you're hurting all the time and, and the sores and the blisters are breaking out over your body, God will take care of you. Brother Derek Abram, when you had to have your legs amputated, God will take care of you. Sister Terry, when you're fighting, see OPD, Sister June Holmes, when you're battling with 
aches and pains in your knees, when you're facing all of the challenges, you know that God will take care of you. Sister Val, we know that God will take care of you. When, 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 when Jonah has been uh, uh, diagnosed with COVID, God will take care of you. Today we want to pause before we leave to offer a special prayer for Sister Gisette Whitaker Simmons. Sister Simmons is scheduled to undergo hip surgery. This will be her last Sunday with us for a few weeks and we want to cover her with believing prayer. I want to remind her that if God could keep you before, he can keep you again. If God had brought you out before, he can bring you out again. Sister Simmons, you've got a, you've got a track record with God. <laughs> yeah, you've got, a, you've got a testimony journal that God is no shorter than his word. We not only want to pray for her, we're going to offer special prayer for her, but I want to, us to continue to pray for Brother Jonah Houston. I want to pray for uh, the Jones family, uh, Deacon Archie Jones and Sister Marie Jones, uh, passing of her brother-in-law. They are going to Louisiana. Pray for them in their time of bereavement. I spoke with a pastor friend of mine, one of my best friends who pastors in Louisiana on yesterday. He had to funeralize a member of his church, a 19-year-old young man who died from COVID. Our kids are going back to school. Our young people are going back to school. Matter of fact, on yesterday, we took Caleb, or Jacob rather, to get them all situated in his dorm on the campus of University of Texas in Dallas. And I know that faith and fear don't go together, they don't coexist. But it still nonetheless does not alleviate the distress. And so we want to pray for our young adults who will be going back to college campuses and that God would keep them safe and God would protect them. And as our children prepare, we don't know what this school year will entail and how it will look. Some will be virtual, some will attend, but we won't even cover them in believing prayer. And all of our graduates from high school who are making decisions to go off to school and in these challenging times. And I don't want to forget those of you who've struggling financially. We've cut off the assistance and when jobs are having to lay off and downsize. I just want to remind you that God will take care of you. God hasn't forgotten about us. Every believer, if you will join with us as we Pray specifically for Sister Simmons. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for loving us. We thank you that your love for us allowed your son to die on the cross to provide salvation, forgiveness of sins. God, we come to you this morning, and your word says if we regard iniquity in our heart, you won't hear us. So God, if there's anything that's in us that's not like you, we confess our sins right now. We ask that you would forgive us. Heavenly Father, that our prayers will not be hindered. Oh God, we lift up to you this morning, Sister Gisette, as she prepares to undergo hip surgery 
Lord, we thank you in advance because we know that you've already prepared a way. So God, we pray now that as you saturate her mind and her spirit with the powerful presence of the Holy Spirit, that she will go in that surgery knowing that she's a vessel full of Holy Ghost power. God, we pray for those who will be attending to her care. We pray for the doctors who will perform the procedure. We pray for the nurses who will be attending to her. We pray for the anesthesiologists who will administer, uh, if necessary, the drugs that will cause her to go through the surgery uh, with uh, uh, no feelings of pain and discomfort. God, we pray that her body will accept and not reject the work that's being done, oh God. We pray that as they began to work to correct and to adjust and, and to strengthen her in the area of her hip, oh God, we pray because you made her and know all about her, we pray, oh Heavenly Father, that the healer would heal her body. We pray, oh Heavenly Father, that you would work on the inside what needs to work on the inside so that no rejection of the procedure will take place, that everything will line up according to your will and your way. God, we pray for her that you would keep her mind stayed upon you, that as, as she goes under, that she would just be reminded to be not dismayed, whatever be tied. God will take care of her. And when we go through the valley, you're there. If we're on the mountaintop, you're there. So God, would you be with her in the operating room? And then, God, when you get through working on her through the hands of the doctor, be with her in the recovery room, oh God. And then when they discharge her, be with her in her bedroom, oh God. And begin to work the healing and the strengthening that's necessary, oh God. You've done it before for others, and we know it is no secret what you can do. So, God, we thank you today. We thank you for successful surgery. We thank you for complete and full healing. And then, God, we lift up to you every name and every person who we've called already today. Every person who's watching, every person under the sound of my voice. Lord, we need you, and we simply can't make it without you. Oh, Heavenly Father, it seems like we're living in times of indefinite uncertainty, but we know that you're still on the throne. We know that you watch over your own, so God, help us in the midst of what we're going through to steal away and find peace and solace in you. Oh God, where we're weak, would you strengthen us? Where we're torn down, would you build us up? Where we're leaning, would you prop us up, oh God? Where we're afraid, would you give us more faith? Where we're discouraged, oh God, would you encourage us? And God, we pray for our young people our young people who are going off to college, our young people who are going back uh, to school, oh Heavenly Father, would you bless them, be with the teachers and administrators, and help them to exercise wisdom and prudence, oh God. And then God, would you continue to work in the midst of this worldwide pandemic? Oh God, would you raise up people of good conscience and common sense. Would you raise up people of wisdom and integrity, oh God? We pray for the doctors and we pray for those who, who are in the health profession. We pray for those who are working to bring about a vaccine and those who are working, oh Heavenly Father, on the front lines to care for those who are struggling through the scourge of this pandemic. Oh God, we know that it'll be all right in the morning. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And God, we don't know how long the night, we don't know how long it's going to be before morning comes. But God, we trust you that when that morning comes, that you'll make everything clear and plain. Heavenly Father, you'll continue to protect us. Give us refuge, give us comfort, give us courage. Lord, this is our prayer. All we fail in asking, we ask that you would not fail in Granny. Oh, you know what we need even before we ask you. Lord, there may be someone who's watching, who's at the crossroads of life, wondering which way to go and what to do. 
Heavenly Father, would you give them direction and insight? Put someone in their path, oh God, that will lead them to you. Will lead her to you. That their way may be made known. Heavenly Father, they'll come to faith and trust you with all their heart. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Listen, thank you for being a part of our worship experience this morning. Sister Gisette, we're looking forward to you returning back within a few weeks. Amen, amen, amen. We've got several members who've gone through hip procedures before. Uh, Brother John Brown and Brenda Brown, I know you're watching. Amen. Praying for you. Listen, if you've been blessed by our ministry and would like to support us, through financial contributions, you can go to our website, www.greaterzionhouston.org. When you go to our website, there's a donate link, and it'll lead you, direct you straight to Giveify, and you can give to our ministry through that means. If you have Giveify app on your phone, you can find us at Greater Zion Baptist Church on Truly. If you have Cash app, you can give to us uh, with the hashtag, that's the dollar sign, Greater Zion Houston, on Cash app. We'll receive your contributions that way. Also, you can do it through snail mail. You can mail it. Greater Zion Baptist Church, 3202 Truly Avenue, Houston, Texas, 77004. Thank you so much. Uh, we pray that this ministry and this message has been a blessing to you. Uh, I want to pray that uh, God would keep you, that his face will ever shine upon you, that it'll bless your down setting and your uprising. That he'll bless you going and he'll bless you coming. That he'll prosper you in every way. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with you until we meet again. And they all said, Amen. God bless you. We'll see you back Facebook Live on Tuesday for Bible study, 7 o'clock.